So tell me, why are you transhuman? Why am I transhuman? Uh, well, I've always used the word transhumanist up until now because right now I'm a fairly regular human being, I think. But um, I believe that we've got a lot of potential. Um, living beyond a normal human lifespan is something possible right now. That humanity is at its best when it's hoping for something better, something more. And we should do that. And technology is the best way to do that, as long as it's guided by good ethical, philosophical, social principles. I think more. We need more. More and better. If not for us, then for our children, grandchildren, and so on. And for me, that, uh, that leads into a lot of different questions. For, uh, some people imagine that transhumanism is just a technological thing. Um, for me, it's, it's, it's about everything in life. It's about how you imagine society should be run, what is just, what is ethical. Um, we are living at a time when even though certain bad outcomes seem highly likely, also incredibly positive things are possible. Things that in the past could only really have been dreamt of in, um, in a religious context or uh, in the realms of fantasy, but now we actually have the chance to make incredible things happen and incredible things are already beginning to happen. So why not shoot for the highest? And one of the very limited beginnings, the lowest foothills of that kind of journey, are having a longer lifespan, living healthier, happier, longer, doing more good for more people over more time. And that's a good thing. How did you become a transhumanist? Ah, <clears throat> I was... I always read a lot as a child and I was interested in science fiction, um, um, all sorts of science fiction, yeah, other things too, but quite a lot of science fiction. And then I went to university, studied psychology, wasn't sure how interested in it was. It was interesting to think about how the human mind works from various disciplines, but I also, I, I realized that I was particularly interested in artificial intelligence and coming at things from um, from the angles of computing, um, biology, philosophy, engineering, as well as psychology, neuroscience, which was um, still emerging really as a field, as a serious field unto itself when I was an undergraduate. Um, so, I started, I, I, I came to the end of my first degree, I saw an advert for courses that I might do in cognitive science that was bringing all these fields together and exploring topics like AI and I thought that's, that's the thing for me. And then while I was doing that course, um, we were really encouraged to read around and explore the possibilities and I found myself, um, the, the breakthrough book for me was Mind Children by Hans Moravec. Uh, I think it was published in about 1989, but I read it in 1994, and that just blew my head off. Uh, he was talking about the kind of things that Ray Kurzweil then went on at greater lengths about, but he was talking about developments in robotics and um, artificial intelligence, exploding computational power, and how so much more was going to be possible in the next few years than had been impossible in the in, had been possible in the decades before that. And he was right. So far, the roadmap is broadly correct. Um, this is revolutionary change, and this isn't the kind of revolutionary change that comes around from pointing guns at each other. It's, it's from providing people the tools to make their lives a little bit better. And then they take things a step further, they develop new and better tools, and eventually the tools, well already the tools are starting to design themselves in small ways, and that's just going to become more and more true. And, um, and I think that humanity needs to hitch a ride on this wave of change. So for me it really was about reading. It was a moment looking um, looking at what might be covered in these courses and then when I got to the courses having conversations and then going down to the library and exploring books that um, 
that I might not otherwise explored and then coming across this one book by Hans Moravec and that opened up a, a, a huge new world. There was another book that I read five years later that had a similar sort of catalytic, catalytic effect for me it was um, Diaspora by Greg Egan. That was fiction but really exploring a post-human future and I just thought if even 10% of this could be achieved the world would be changed for the better and why wouldn't you want to try to change the world for the better. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah.